I am Hallie Caster Jane, and welcome to the Hallie Caster Jane Show, where along with my partner in politics, veteran White House correspondent, and Time and Newsweek alum Matthew Cooper, we slice and dice all things politics, and some days, our lawmakers too. Before we get started, the Hallie Caster Jane Show podcast is always available at HallieCasterJane.com and wherever you most like to listen to your podcasts. And be sure to follow me on Twitter at Hallie Show Quotes. Now, let's get started. It's Hallie and Matt time. Here we go. So, Matthew, hello. Hi, Hallie. It's been a while. Did you miss me? I did. I missed our, our. I missed you. I missed our talks. I missed our audience. It was so um, bizarre not to be talking to you on a weekly basis, but. For those who don't know, I, I I got quite ill, and it was just I had to stop because I wasn't getting better because I was working myself to the bone. So under doctor's orders, I took a few weeks off, which I never do. And oh my gosh, I'm a new woman, but I did miss you. Uh, likewise, I did likewise. miss you. Likewise, well, I'm glad you're back and a lot going on. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, where do we begin? Um, I'll tell you where we begin. I'm in Florida, COVID hell. It only gets worse. Right. So we've been talking about this for a while, um, even before your break. Tell me tell me what's the latest down there, what you're seeing, because you're on the scene. And... It's it's so bad, and it's, it's in a way not being properly reported, because in my little world, and I have a very small world, I can't, I can't count the cases of COVID of my friends, their children, their grandchildren. It is... Everywhere. So all ages, all ages, in 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 it's it, it's just when they say one in ten, they're not kidding. <laughs> and uh, were these people that you know unvaccinated? Vaccinated? No, uh, um, some vaccinated, some not vaccinated. A, a, a very good friend of mine was doubly vaccinated. Didn't matter. Got it. Is in the hospital and has been there now for four weeks. Yeah, gosh. Now I was going to ask. So the people you know have got it. Did their symptoms range from kind of asymptomatic to hospitalization? None of them are asymptomatic. Whole? None of them are asymptomatic. It it goes oh. from a slight cold, and then it kind of sits there, and then from there it goes, and it progresses into respiratory, um, from the youngest to the oldest. Now, um, the school. I think it's. The school is the you know is the problem. We all know what that that uh, DeSantis has done everything he can to stop mask wearing and no vaccinations, et cetera. And finally, yesterday the court held its ground and said, uh, you know, you're going to require masks and you're not going to uh, be able to charge the schools right. who require masks. And so the stay was lifted, which this judge apparently has never done in the history of his time on the bench. And we'll see what happens, because it's going to a Republican judge next, and you know what's going to happen. But it seems to me, and I can't figure it out, I was trying to do some research on this yesterday, a very good friend of mine, his son, who's in his early 40s, and his kid and his wife weren't vaccinated. and thought They just thought that was fine. And I don't know whether the, who got it first, because the mother has it, and she works at a hotel, and then the kid got it. Um, and then, and then my friend's son didn't, uh, doesn't have his test uh, negative so far, but of course his work said, you ain't coming in and his, and the right. schools, the school immediately said, you ain't coming in and, and, they, right. and there you go. Um, uh, it, it, it's just utterly bizarre because you can't, you don't want to go anywhere because you know, everybody's getting it. And anyway, the kid, the kid is symptomatic. Which is really, you know, they said no. These kids will get up, but they won't. Be. He's he's incredibly symptomatic. So just just to right. let you know, oh don't come to Florida because you're you're gonna get it. Uh, same friends, my sister came to Florida, uh, flew in from Hawaii, and is dead. Jesus. So, is this kind of uh, huh. depth and to how? How this interesting, how, and in the county where you are, is it one of the ones that yes, has a high. mask requirement? No, it has a mask requirement. No mask in requirement in the school, and 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 the count and the count's very high. Yeah, and, and what's going on in the schools? So they're not. It's not required. But they have to close schools. They're, they're actually closing schools because the caseload is getting so high. In your county, 
it, some of the schools have had to close. It's not just in my county, it's all across the state. Like I said, there's very odd reporting going on here. I, I, I frankly don't understand it. I do know yesterday that a friend of mine who's a journalist said um, he's been following freezer trucks because the morgues are completely filled with bodies. So they have to bring these freezer cr- trucks. So he, on his own, he wasn't assigned the thing, just got into his car, was on the freeway, started to see them, started following them, and it was like, you know, lines of freezer trucks. And, he, you, know, you know, he went and he followed them to schools and to, 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 uh, to morgues because they don't know where to put the bodies. So I'm going to call this this. I'm curious what you think about this. this is, the reason this is happening, Matt, I, uh, one of the reasons, of the many reasons, but it's a reason that I don't think that, this is like the... Um, there's no picture to go along with, with this disease. Polio, you had an iron lung, and you had pictures of people in iron lungs, which was just terrifying. You, you can't take pictures of people's lungs. You can go into the hospital, you can see them in bed, you know, writhing, you know, in, 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 in discomfort. But you can't get a picture of what this is. So it's the disease that is kind of no big deal. If you had to put them in iron lungs to breathe, I think there would be a huge difference in how people responded to it. I'm saying, I'm just saying. What do you think? Yeah. No. Uh, well, I, well, I, I think that I think that's right. Um, you know, most of the you know most searing images are of you know shut down businesses and empty streets, and but they're not of individuals suffering. Exactly. For the most part. So what's going to um, happen to somebody else? And you don't really, you know, you can't take pictures of what's going on in a person's lungs or in their heart. Right, right. No, you definitely can't take a picture of a person's lungs. Yeah, um, so I think that that's a huge problem. Um, Biden <coughs> is going to give a speech tonight? Yes? Yeah, he is. He's going to use um, executive power and as much muscle as he can to... Um, Push vaccinations. It's it's a little no more Mister Nice Guy. So he's going to announce that uh, federal employees need uh, a vaccination and uh, contractors their jobs. Yeah, contractors. It's not just enough to uh, you know get tested, opt out of vaccination, but get tested often, which has uh, been the case in a lot of um, areas in public and private sector employment. Now it's going to be you get the shot or you don't work here. Um, I'm sure he'll get pushed back on that from unions and litigants and whatnot. But yeah, I think it's a sign the White House knows that this is, you know, there's no more victory laps on this. He's going to have to engage in what the what they said during the Cold War, a long twilight struggle. It's uh, it's not going to be over soon, and he's going to kind of gear everyone up for, you know living with this rather than defeating this. I, I, I'm going to tell you, it, uh, it's my opinion that unless he really gets drastic with this, he doesn't get reelected, and the Dems lose the uh, midterms. People are just exhausted from this. They're just sick and tired of it. I, you know, whatever the anti... The, 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 the minority is ruling and controlling this game right now, which is disgraceful. Uh... But I don't, I don't think people can handle it much longer. And unless everybody gets vaccinated, it doesn't end. It just goes on and on and on and on and on. So it's my opinion that he's... And look at his poll numbers. Hello. Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, okay. You said hello. Uh, yeah. No, his poll numbers are... Yeah, there's no... Yeah. Go ahead. Hello? Yeah, I'm right here. Okay, I said his poll numbers are horrid. Uh, they just tanked. And... It has to do with COVID and all the effects that COVID has on people's mentality and, you know, whatever. So I, I want to discuss this a little bit more in depth than we are at this point in the, our conversation. But I do want to say, at some point, L.A. school system announced that vaccinations are going to be required in their schools. First state to do it. And I don't see how you don't somehow figure a way to push those schools all across the country to do it. Uh, they do get federal money. So that's the game. Make it mandatory or you lose your federal money. I mean, you know, it was good enough for DeSantis to do. <laughs> yeah, well, you can see he's having trouble in the courts, and I, I think Biden has limits to what he can do federally. But, uh, look, I agree. I, I think I think what is, you know, what the scientists said, I don't know anything about this, but that, you know, this will 
this will lend its course that eventually everybody's going to get some version of it and it's going to become, you know, like the 1918 flu, which still exists, but is no longer, um, toxic. It, it right. just eventually has to play itself out. Um, and hopefully, you know, people get the vaccination nonetheless because it, Better it play itself out with people vaccinated than not. Oh, for sure. And the, but the, the, you know, this isn't 1918. That's the difference. And the kind of lifestyles that we all lead right now are so different than they were back then. So uh, the comparison is kind of strange in in, in in that sense. But well, uh, just in the sense that that diseases, you know, uh, um, infectious diseases play themselves out, and that's why I think they. Well, that's what the DeSantis toxicity is. diminishes over time, and um, you know it has to play itself out. Uh, Except that, that this one is mutating, things. mutating again into the mu right. version. Uh, right. And and Israel is now on its what third <laughs> booster, right. fourth we booster? Will. booster. Yeah, yeah, we will have boosters and mutations, and um, and of course, as long as most of the world is not vaccinated. And it, uh, the mutations will form with greater speed and uh, likely toxicity. You know, I mean, it's in our interest to get the world vaccinated, and uh, that's not happening. So, for a little humor, really have you gotten enough. have you gotten your shot of ivermectin? <laughs> no, I I haven't done uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Rasputin or whatever the other one was that Trump was pushing. And, no, I haven't gotten any. You know, I'm not taking any ginseng or. <laughs> Well, the Saint ivermectin, John's I have, I happen to have a little bit of knowledge of because you know I'm a horse woman, and you know, I used to have to give those big old ivermectin shots uh, for deworming to my horses, and these just you know huge vials. I mean, they were like you know eight, ten inches long, for God's sakes. And what people didn't understand, you could get a horse sick by worming them. This stuff is all that powerful. But now, yesterday, it was announced that men who take ivermectin suffer from sterility. <laughs> So have at it, boys. Yeah, really. Well, right? um, yeah, what could go wrong? <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's crazy crap. It, it, people are absolutely nuts. The same I is, don't really understand why people are so vaccine resistant, but they love taking these crazy things. I mean, because they say that if you take the vaccine, it's really a shot of a small camera that's put into your arm. Right. That they can go and follow you wherever you go because because yes. everybody cares yes. where you go. Yes, unlike Facebook, yes. Yes, exactly. Um, <laughs> exactly, exactly. I, look, well, it's, it's, it's crazy business. We're um, in crazy times. Uh, Jim Justice, who's the Republican governor from West Virginia, has done a bang-up job getting downright feisty and honest about this you know he's 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 doing this psa saying what are you people crazy a republican governor in what used to be a democratic state is is you know just going batshit crazy over all of this unlike his democratic senator joe manchin (laughs) he is who is not quite as sane as as jim justice is i mean you know what can we talk about Joe Manchin for a second and get off yeah, COVID? Yeah, and did, did he have something to say about COVID and vaccines? No, COVID not COVID vaccines, stuff. just that, you know, he's 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 going to stop. Um, yeah, he's pushing back on Biden's uh, big $3.5 trillion package <sighs> of liberal goals and such. And he's, um, he's, you know, in a divided Senate, every man's a king, and he likes wearing the crown, so he has been pushing back, saying he's not going to support this, leaving, uh, you know, the Biden folks to wonder, well, what did they do? Can he be appeased? Uh, um, is there a way to convince him otherwise, etc.? The interesting thing about this is there's a pattern that goes on with him, which is he lets it go along, and then he writes an op-ed, and he, you know, pull, you know, bangs the hammer, I'm not going along with this, yada, 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 and then ultimately he caves. Uh, my reporting says that, uh, uh, they're not taking them as seriously as they used to. I don't know if that's a smart thing or a dumb thing. Um, I, I think they'd run him out of town and he, if he were to stop he, Biden. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I literally no do question. think they would. Yeah. Well, it's a, it, you know, it's a, it's a process with him. It's the many stages of. 
dealing with him. There's, you know, there's anger, denial. Right, exactly. Pushing back. Yeah. Ultimately, um, you know, he has gone along with a lot of things, you know, bitched about, and maybe he'll go along with this. I imagine it'll be a small, if it does pass, it'll be a smaller package than it is now, but, you know, such is the nature of, of these things. Uh, I, you know, I'll be honest I'm sure he's with you. not the only. I'm sure he's not the only person. I'm sure he's not the only Democrat to have reservations about the size in this package. Well, how um, dare they have reservations about 3.5 trillion after what Trump yeah. did? After what Trump did with his seven point something yeah. trillion? I mean, you know, give me a break. Well, this is the thing. Every, everybody suddenly, you know, becomes becomes a prude about spending it. You know, yes. after we've. I mean, I don't, you know, I don't know why anyone bothers to care at this point. I mean, right, exactly. Um, what we're spending is so divorced from revenue at this point. You know, just have at it. Have at it. But you know, it gets into a question about how Democrats um, conduct themselves. You know, you and I've had this conversation ad nauseum that they don't quite know how to play dirty the way the Republicans do. Um, you know, and it's like they're playing by the books and the Republicans are screwing them at every turn that they can possibly um, screw them at. Uh, and, you know, it, it's a hard lesson and one that they better learn very quickly to change because I'm really worried that if they don't uh, uh, start getting really aggressive uh, in getting his agenda pushed through as quickly as they can, you know, there's going to be such a long-term effect Uh Talking long-term effect, here, here, here's one. Texas abortion fiasco. I mean, right? Yeah. You, you mean the effect will be if he... If well, I mean, I mean, you know, we'll see more elections, like elections count. How you play it counts. Uh, Correct. You know, Supreme Court, 63, it's a mess. And it's a mess because the Democrats just never quite got how you play the game. And they still don't. So my concern right now is it's it's past time to learn. I I don't know Joe Biden. I know his team. I know that I notice that they're getting him out there as much as they possibly can. He's been on TV every day now for the last week, uh, which is really interesting to me. And he's going to give a speech tonight. Uh, that tells me that they they think the more that people see him, the more they like him, the better things get. But his polls, because of Afghanistan, which we'll talk about in a second, you know, tanked. They're, they're bad. You know, they're not going to win a midterm with these kind of poll numbers. And like I said, if you keep on doing the same old thing, the same old way, you get the same old result, which is why I think at this point it's my opinion that the Democrats better figure that they got to start playing really, really rough or else you get this mess that came out of Texas and this abortion thing. You do background and then we'll discuss it because I get sick from this. The, the Texas abortion law. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, the, the Texas heartbeat laws, it's called, uh, um, makes it possible that when a woman, that when a fetus uh, displays uh, some kind of heartbeat, which is usually around six weeks, that abortions after, uh, abortions before that are okay, although most women don't realize who are interested in abortion don't realize they're pregnant so early. Um, but, uh, at that point, um, rather than the state banning abortions and enforcing it, they've licensed every citizen anywhere to uh, launch a suit against anyone who, uh, performs AIDS, participates in, um, an abortion of a post six week old fetus. So, you know, the Uber driver takes the woman to a clinic, the clergyman who recommends uh, what to do, the lawyer who gets you over to Louisiana, whatever, um, all are open to the suits. And, and there's, a, you know, a, a big flock of, um, you know, right to life activists who are ready to start litigating. Um, you know, it comes with a $10,000 penalty, uh, you know, and court costs. It's designed to close abortion clinics. Uh, and that's what's happened. You know, the clinics in uh, Texas are closing. Um, because they can't operate under those kinds of um, legal sort of Damocles hanging over them. So this is clearly, um, you know, an unconstitutional law, a challenge to Roe v. Wade and Planned Parenthood versus Casey. 
Um, and uh, now the Supreme Court, instead of just say, putting on a stay and saying, well, we want to hear the arguments about this, uh, they said, well, this is so confusing since there's no public official enforcing this law. We don't know who to, who to send a stay to. So well, we're just, we'll come back to it later. And that's what um, you know, five of the justices did. All the conservatives, except for Roberts. So this law is is in effect for now in Texas. Um, so let's discuss some of the ramifications here, though, Matt. Because well, they're extraordinary. I mean, yeah, yeah. So, so what we what what Texas has basically done is set up a bounty hunter system, like That's the old precisely. West. Precisely, it's like snitches and bounty hunters. Okay, you know, I looked up bounty hunters because you know I've been working on this crazy project thing. Uh, maybe you don't know, but but I'm working on something about the Old West and, and uh, Native Americans or whatever. But long story short, it's very interesting to me that bounty hunting has been banned in every country except the United States. Did you know that? I did not know that. That's interesting. And our version of it is morphed, obviously. It's not like the old days where a bunch of guys said, oh, there's a bounty on this guy. Let's go find him. Not quite that. Now they use right. it, now they use it more for the uh, courts and for people who are jumping bail and crap like that, or not paying their bail bond. But nevertheless, it's legal. Where in most Western countries it's been deemed. Oh well, yeah, it's 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 uh, glorified with TV shows. So. Exactly, exactly. And you know, you, who who do you trust? But I want to go back to the Supreme Court because I got a new name for them. Because I, they're the, I love your name. I love your names. Night Court. <laughs> for those of us of a certain age who remember the, remember the series Tom. and the bungling night. and they, they whatever to do this in the dark of night was just right the w- so-called shadow docket yeah, yeah it was really a disgrace of, amongst all the other disgraces but right we have to discuss it in terms of th- th- this this supreme court i mean first of all susan collins ha- has some explaining to do well, yes, uh, Brett Kavanaugh was part of the conservative cabal that uh, clearly allowed this Texas law to stay, and and you know she had vouched for him. Supreme Court doesn't have to issue an opinion; they don't have to really explain the reasons or even sign it individually. They can just put out nothing, or as they did, a short one paragraph. Well, I understand saying, that, but uh, my reason for saying this is she vouched for him when everybody well, of course, and of she course. swore yes, up and down that he looked her in the eye and. You know. Right, he's he's not going to overturn Roe. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. exactly. So yeah. well, she's well. This goes back to what I was talking about in terms of how Dems han- handle themselves. And if they can't make a direct hit one place, they have to go and make a direct hit another. And I think that they really ought to just take her down and out. Uh, she was just reelected, but you can render her somebody who doesn't want to put her face in front of the camera anymore because she's been so humiliated and so shamed, and they need to humiliate her and shame her the way that they're trying to shame these women in Texas. Just saying. Uh, yes. And uh, oh, I, I, I think that makes total sense. You know, and, um, and that's where the Democrats uh, never get it right. But they need to do that. They need to do that. Right. I, I want to talk about abortion for a second. I, you know, I'm, I'm pro-choice, but, you know, I'm, I doubt that I could ever abort a child. I had an interesting conversation with somebody who wrote this out who had fathered a child with the woman that he loved when he was a young man. And she didn't tell him she was pregnant right away. And then she told him. She didn't want to marry. He asked her to marry. She didn't want to marry him. But she said, but I would like you to take care of your child and be a part of your child's life. And they were both very, very young. And this was pre-abortion easy days. You couldn't just go and get an abortion back in the day. Long story short, they wind up in court, and the judge comes down on him and says, this is what you're going to have to pay weekly to support this child who you're a parent of. Now, he's telling me that he's complete, you know, he's a real churchgoer, you know, a evangelical even, and he's telling me how he does not believe um, in abortion, and it's murder, and he would never sanction it, and, you know, adoption is the answer, yada, yada, yada. And then he tells me that he ultimately made, which I knew because he didn't meet his kid until the kid was 13, that he walked away because he, could, he didn't want to pay pay the payments. And I said to him, you know, the abortion comes in many forms. You you virtually aborted your child. You were a young man. You made a mistake. You're the first to admit it. He does because he loves his kid to death now. But 
the fact of the matter is, he couldn't carry it to term, or it wasn't his body that this child, this thing was in, yada, 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 that women have to go and, and suffer the consequences. But he did, nevertheless, and that's men's option. That's men's divorce. Men's divorce can be, I am not going to support this child. So, you know, we need to have this conversation of abortion in a much larger sense. And, and, and that's why the narrow uh, uh, framework of not only the te- the Texas crap that they've been pulling, but how we view uh, and and have this conversation abortion makes it a woman's shame when I think it's an equally can be a man's shame. And it shouldn't be anybody's shame. It should be choice. He knew that the, his, his girlfriend, by the way, was in love with another man, and she ultimately married him, and that was who he was going to let raise that kid. Stupid choice, but... It was a choice, and he was allowed that choice. Women don't get that choice if you abo- if, if if you if you kill Roe v. Wade. Just saying. Uh, no, that is true. They do they do not, and um, and of course, uh, you know, getting child support from men is uh, it's been a big and ongoing problem, regardless of abortion. Um, well, look, this Texas law, uh, I don't think there's any guarantee that it's going to stay enforced um but it is a it is a big deal uh deal to, uh to have the second most populous state effectively ban uh abortion and you know look this the supreme court's full of shit if california had passed a uh law that rode roughshod over the supreme court's uh gun decision in heller and they said, actually, yeah, actually, you can, uh, you know, you can ban guns and you can sue people who have guns, and uh, we're just gonna, we're just gonna do it our way. Uh, this court would have struck that down in about thirty seconds. Um, but, no, the, you, you know, this know, is this a, is this is an, this is an ideological battle they have been waging since the eighties, you know, and they were gonna take it and will continue to take it to any degree they have because it's a political fight. Because you know damn well half the people on that court probably at one time or another knocked somebody up. <laughs> you know? Uh, Kavanaugh, for one, by the way. We, so we also learned that that investigation that was supposed to happen during his confirmation hearings never actually did, and it's my opinion that, boy, oh boy, there's another avenue for the Democrats to go is, you know, to insist that some kind of investigation be done into his behavior uh, and, and drag him down, too. This is the biggest failing of Biden, as yeah. far as I'm concerned, because, um, you know, he's kind of in la-la land in some respects, if you ask me, uh, on all of this. It, you know, he just lets his stuff roll off his back and figures, I'm just going to plow through, do what I have to do. It isn't working for him, which is why his poll numbers are suffering so badly. Um, and so I think he needs to uh, to get a team in there that's just going to become as relentless in, in, in um, destroying everybody in the Republican Party as best that they can. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, this is a, this is a big deal, and the court has another big abortion case to consider. And, right. Um, in the next session, I don't. I you know I I don't think Roe will be dead in a year, but I think um, it'll be rendered mute, neutered. Yeah, the way men be, should be neutered, be who knock women up and walk away. I'm sorry. What? <laughs> <laughs> right. There you go. <laughs> I mean, that's it. Uh, we already have one justice on the Supreme Court who's been neutered for all intent and purposes, and her its name is. Don't get me started on her. Um, all right, she I has want, like five kids. What are you talking about? She, uh, she, men. She she she's in a cult. She's playing. Oh yeah, well that doesn't mean she's. No 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 no. Hear me on this one. This is not a thinking woman. This is a woman who 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 is in a cult where men have all the control and she does their thing. And she's going along with their her husband and her cult political game. I mean, she they they, they basically. I mean, I'm not talking about. I and mean, she she's a she's a baby making machine. <laughs> well, she's definitely not neutered. Um, no, she, well, the, the, the word for woman is not neutered. By the way, uh, that's for men. Okay, neuter men. Well, but, I, I, you know, I'm. But she 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 is a vessel. And that's what she is, and she's playing it to the to the hill with having a whole bunch of babies and adopting kids, you know. And I mean, there's a whole game that goes on in that world. But basically, men well, are making the choices right. for that for those women. She doesn't have a well. I I yeah. don't know. She could be doing it of her own volition. I don't, I don't think she's necessarily. Uh, I think she's evil. Uh, Tom, Tom. But I in do. any event, 
<laughs> in any event, it's her. Uh, it's her. You know, look. I mean, I think Roberts is uh, is not going to be the last time we see Roberts voting with the liberals and getting run over by the other ones. I would sure love to have an interview with him. I don't know if he ever could be honest in where no. he's at and what he's he 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 would ever. I mean, uh, his actions speak louder than his words. That's for sure. Um, but he he. I'm all for packing the court now, but I'm all for ending the filibuster now, too. Let's talk about that, um, because I do think it's fascinating what's going on. And, and in this way that I think the Democrats start to need to get aggressive, one of them is, look, if Joe's numbers stay down, which I'm not sure that they will, maybe we should have that discussion before we go further, because maybe that's Afghanistan and, and, and the surge of COVID. Uh, can he recover from that? What do you think? Uh, sure. I mean, it's, you know, it's... Is early it enough? By, well, it depends if you're talking about the midterms or the or presidential reelect. but, you know, look, it's uh, September 2021. There's a lot that's going to happen between now and November of next year, but uh, that said, you're right. At the moment, he's, he's less popular. I don't think the Democrats are on track for um, a successful midterm. I think they're on track for a bad one. Um... You know, I think we'll, everyone will keep an eye on the Gavin Newsom recall and the Virginia governor's elections to the degree that they're bellwethers. And um, so let me give you a bellwether on, on Terry McAuliffe. Do you know this? Do you know that in the last weeks that his competitor has surged into equal with him? He lost his entire advantage because Biden's polls are dragging him down. Did you know that? Yes, yes. I know I'm, I'm in the I'm in. You're in Washington. DC, yeah, Virginia's in our market. It's uh, we see a lot of yeah. Uh, so I mean, Virginia this is concerning. News. Yeah, I I believe uh, McCall is still in, you know, and uh, but it's it's closer than it should be, and um, and this guy's an asshole. <laughs> oh yeah, right. <laughs> the, yeah, no, not that that stopped. Well, I mean, no, right, yeah. but he is. Um, yeah. You know, he's a rich Carlisle group guy who's basically <laughs> not a right winger, but who's pretending to be one <laughs> for the Trumpies. And um, that video of him talking about abortion is just devastating. Um, I don't think he's going to make it, but I'd, I'd be he just It's Virginia. Virginia's weird. Well, yeah, but, but, getting, but getting bluer. Now, I think Newsom's going to be okay. Yeah, my, that looks... Pretty she, good. That I looks, think if it had been last week, I think if it had been two weeks ago, he wouldn't have been. But he seems to have have. I think uh, they've scared the shit out of people about Larry Elder. I think they're making it a straight blue red fight out there, and that's good in a very blue state. So, you know, they got Biden and Harris and everybody going out there. Yeah, to the flag. yeah. I I I think he's going to be okay too. And and you know he didn't he, he they put up some really crappy people against him. That was the other thing that people just had to find out about um and and uh what's her name um what's her name uh the kardashian <laughs> uh, oh yeah jenner yeah, yeah. Jen jenner just helped as far as i'm concerned uh yeah so. well caitlin jenner yeah will end up to be sort of a sure. <laughs> non-factor compared to larry elder yeah I mean, but, but but a real jerk too um well just not smart enough no, 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 had no, no, no. You just, not, you know. Yeah, right. Um, so I was talking about saving um, uh, Biden's presidency. I just want to tell you that I've been thinking a lot of this. They ought to hire me. They need to abolish the filibuster. And, and, and um, uh, of all people, Harry Reid came out today and said to end the filibuster. Um, they need to get uh, uh, the court packed. Uh Merrick Garland needs to get more aggressive on a multiple fronts, and he's a conversation we could have. Uh, they need to reinstate the jobless benefits and the housing eviction moratorium, and they need to go after their enemies, DeSantis and the rest. And if they don't do all of those things, Matt, I think they're toast. And the Democrats are the ones who are pulling his poll numbers down in the independents, and that's because we've had enough I, the thing that I hear most from fellow Democrats or from, I'm not a Democrat, but I'm an independent, but, but from people on the left, uh, is there, we're in the majority and I've never felt more in the minority. Nothing I want is getting done. The agenda is being manipulated 
by the right. And they're right. And they're right. Don't you agree? I mean, it's not Biden's agenda. It's in re- it's it, they're, uh, they're on the defensive again against the wacky Republicans. Yeah, well, look, I agree. There's no question he's he's got to get things passed, and he's got to get them passed um, quick. Quickly, the Democrats cannot survive without passing more of their agenda. Uh, they will get killed. They may get killed even if they do pass it, but. They got to, but they have no up. chance if they don't pass. If they don't right, pass it. they got to get more on the board. They're not getting it. Um, the continued existence of the filibuster they, makes it. It's a real mess, a messaging party. But <laughs> by the way, Amy Klobuchar, who by the way just announced before we went on air that she's been battling breast cancer, but she's okay. I hope you're okay, Amy. Um, but she just announced that she was wants to end the filibuster too. Yeah, that was I a big deal. For, I think, except for Manchin and, and Sinema, maybe one or two others who have kept quiet. I think that's pretty much the consensus in the uh, uh, in the caucus. And you know, uh, God, God, hope the others see it too, and they can get this done because it's really it's 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 not in the Constitution. It's not what the founders wanted. The Senate is already way weighted towards rural conservative states anyway it's not um you know it's not part of the american creed we don't need it and um it's it has a very bad effect i'm curious um, as to what you think in terms of a mansion or a cinema at the end of the day if they start to think see things really unravel uh well i you know i i don't totally understand their their game i mean i think for cinema who's from a Increasingly blue state. I, I think it's this has been a riskier path than it is for Mansion. Um, uh, I don't. I, you know, I think I, I'll take them at the word that they believe that sort of bipartisanship is possible, and the filibuster encourages that. And you know, they're proud of what they did on this infrastructure bill that wound up with a lot of Republican support, including Mitch McConnell. So. You know, I take them at their word that they believe there's a path forward to sensible policies under the filibuster regime. But um, I think that's all evidence to the contrary, that that's really what happened. Yeah, so and, and I think what happened... I hope at the end of the day, they. I mean, my I think my hope had always been that they would just get pissed off at Republican obstructionism and they too would join the anti-filibuster chorus, but... Or at the very least, curtail the filibuster. Um, but that is, you know, I don't think it'll happen. I wish it would. Yeah, well, we'll see what happens because there will be co- coattails, and if the entire agenda goes into <laughs> up in flames, uh, yeah, they they pay a price. Yeah, as the, as the old saying goes, they hang together or hang separately. Right, and so it'll be interesting to see. I want to get to Afghanistan really quickly because. I think we were away on vacay when um, uh, Biden ended the war, were we? Or maybe the last show we did, I don't remember. Yeah. Uh, uh, lots gone down. But the, here we are. The war is over. We're mostly out. And this morning, I guess they took out the last hundred Americans uh, with the Taliban's consent. Um, sad part, um, I saw on your Twitter feed that you mentioned that the last Jew was removed or left, and that's very sad um, because the entire yeah. region is Jewless other than basically uh, Israel, uh, you know, where there had been such strong uh, presence there. Uh, but, you know, there's, it ha- I think he was right to do what he did. I think he did it. The, you, you can't get out of a war easy, particularly when you're the losers. <laughs> Hello. I think um, good for him. I'm glad he did what he did. I'm, gl- you know, it wasn't perfect. Uh, it was a lot better than one it could have been. And I think he, I think the press, uh, particularly the New York Times, is just stuck on this for reasons oh, yeah, I just don't just understand. Oh yeah, they're just going on Afghanistan stories every fucking day. I mean, um, and, and and like, who cares? That's the thing. And they, yeah, I mean, you know, Texas, COVID, they 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 can't. They they're going to focus on Afghanistan. And, how horrible he did. But, you know, the truth is, look, the people who ought to be embarrassed are Petraeus, Hillary, Obama, Bush. That they wouldn't get Panetta, out. Yeah. Everybody who, who, who kept saying, oh, one more surge, one more thing, 
it's going to be fine. Oh, now we're using drones, and now the Afghan army's got a got a helicopter. Woohoo! You know, we <laughs> lost twenty years For, and money. The and money lost. Not to mention I mean, the this money. Is, this is yeah, and you know, we went through Vietnam, and then we did the exact same thing. And, Listen, uh, you know, yeah, I agree. Totally agree. We did the exact same thing, and we pissed it all away, and you know. Uh, Biden and, and to a lesser degree, Trump were right. This is bullshit. You should have gotten out. And, uh, and I think it's extraordinary. They got 120,000 people out in a couple of weeks. It was, it was, that's what I'm saying. It was amazing. It really was a feat. Berlin airlift. I mean, it's unbelievable. You know, no planes crashed. They got people packed into these things. They're still getting some people out. So, you know, look, uh, you know, I think that, history, the history will be kind. If the Afghan president's going to flee in the middle of the night and every one of the troops going to lay down their guns and, and let the peasant theocrats come back in <laughs> right, and right. take over and start smashing pianos and putting burqa and beekeeper suits on all the women, you know, after 20 years of this shit, then there's, there's nothing we can do. I mean, uh, no, no, he made the I, right I choice. Hope God, I hope to God the people. What? Rise up against the Taliban, and, and well, uh, I don't know. We'll see about that. That's pretty. But we'll that's, see you know, yeah. I don't think they're gonna. I don't think they're gonna have as easy a time governing as they did in the nineties. But, uh, but for now, it's you know, it's their show, and our good friends, the Pakistanis, can be thanked for their wonderful role in all this. <laughs> yeah, right. You know. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, and and it. But look, I think nothing, I think Biden's right, nothing Chinese and Russians could have wanted more than us being stuck there another 20 years. So um, I'm going to get really cynical here and I'm going to say this. A, he did a great job, I don't care what anybody says, and no, it wasn't perfect, but it, it, it can't be perfect. But B, the amount of money that he is saving will pay for his infrastructure and his package. Thank you very much. And they that ought to, is true. And they ought to be talking about that. You know, we're not. No, that is true because we would have been back to the goddamn surges. Oh, oh, absolutely. You know? Oh, absolutely. We I mean, would have been back to. Oh my God, we need to get in there. We need to have David Petraeus, the miracle worker, go do another surge, and uh, we would have been back at this again. And yeah, it would have gone on for years. And these, these, it's totally disingenuous for people to say, "Well, why can't it be like Germany and Tokyo?" Oh you know, after World War II, we left some troops behind. It's all peaceful. You know, there's a Burger King by the base. <laughs> uh, you da, know, da, 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 da. Went to Germany did his draft tour. What's the problem? Well, let's just leave some people behind. Well, you know, if you had hundreds of thousands of Nazi guerrillas. Shooting at our bases in Germany, that would have been in the 50s, that would have been different. You, you know, this live, is not yeah. like Germany and Japan. No, it's not. Korea. And, and, <laughs> and there are different political people now who play much harder games than they used to. So, so there you go. I would like to see, like I said, they need to get to hire some new uh, messaging people and they need to turn this around in a hurry. Because history will be kind to him for this. I guarantee you, even if there's a surge of, of, um, you know, terrorists or, you know, ISIS there, yeah. it'll still be kind to him. So, um, you know, there, there you go. It, it's, uh, it, it's remarkable to me. Moving on. I just want to go back to Merrick Garland on, on, and just say, I, I think they're going to have to replace him. You got any thoughts on him? I just don't think he's aggressive enough, creative enough, uh, for these times. Well, I, I, th- I think you're probably right. You know, I mean, I think he's uh, certainly on the on the Trump prosecution stuff. He's been he's been very cautious, and I can understand the legal arguments for that. But you know, it's ultimately a political fight as much as the legal one. And um, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I think it's I think a problem. I think he's in the worst possible situation, which is he's weak on that Trump stuff. He has not been aggressive enough on the crime problem yeah we've talked about that. Uh, yeah. i'm sure they're going to get very woke on all this on all the you know racial stuff um so I, you know i just think it's a it's a bad combination i mean they came out of the gate on this texas thing they made it sound like they're going to take action they had nothing to say and they said well we're going to enforce this you know statute from a few years ago about how you can't clog the sidewalks outside an abortion clinic 
well, fuck that. It doesn't matter. If you can, <laughs> right. They shut right. down the abortion clinics. Right. 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 That's you don't what have I'm to saying. Worry about the sidewalks anymore. That's what I'm saying to you. That, that this guy is just. With, they're closed. <laughs> he's not aggressive, and and worse, he's not creative. Uh, and I'm going to tell you something. You know, you brought up the Donald Trump thing because that's on my list. You know, he's still a free man. By the way, so is Matt Gates. Still a free man. That's, yeah. Well, how's your How's your body doing? Yeah. He's he's newly married. Oh yeah, well. Yeah. He's, he's a family man. He's a family man. And they did get a guy on extorting his father, but that has absolutely nothing to do with any of this. The wheels of justice are not serving people. And I'm going to get back to what I said. I, there are certain things that need to happen in order for the Democrats, uh, uh, for Biden to hold the Democrats' attention. And one of them is the need to take some action against Trump. Or you will never get, they will, they will throw up their hands and say, screw all of you. That, I'm yeah. telling you, he's got to take action against Trump, and and Trump is now getting ready to get back on the trail. Uh, we'll discuss his. No, yes. look, they ought to be putting. Yeah. You know, what? No, I agree with you. They ought to be. They ought to be going hard on this stuff. You know, you want that, and I, and you know, I sometimes disagree with you about what you think Democrats should do, but I'll tell you one place where I think we'll agree. Hmm. If if uh, if a Democratic Speaker of the House. Uh, was in jail. Former Democratic Speaker of the House was in jail right now for being paying off the victims of his child molestation, <laughs> and he was doing a hard time for that. Uh, you think you think Republicans would talk about it? You think it would come up on Fox News occasionally? But this is my point. They but don't... Democrats never say say a thing about Danny Hastert, who, by the way, was the longest serving right. Republican right. Speaker right. ever. Right. Right. I mean, he wasn't just in there for six By months. By another an, another gym teacher. Yeah, yeah. A la and uh, the and they're like, yeah. And you think nobody, and you think nobody in uh, Congress knew about it, and nobody knows about Jim Jordan. It's all this other is, shit. Yeah, right. And, but the Democrats, the Democrats can't. The Democrats cannot make Danny Hastert a household word, and um, the way Republicans would. I mean, Republicans are still beating up Hillary on Benghazi. You know, but Democrats, nobody knows who Danny Hastert is because Democrats just kind of, well, they let it go. Well, whatever. It's a private matter. <laughs> well, because the deal is this. They just keep saying we're going to play within the law. We're going to do the right thing. And that's going to pay us pay off in the end. B.S. That isn't going to help. So we'll go this round on, 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 on Dem's behavior uh, in the future because they're, they're just not smart. We got some things to get to in the last few minutes, so I want to I'll move yeah, on. Yeah, let's. Uh, yeah, so let, let, let me no, because believe me, we're going to come back to this because this is a problem and it, it's it's only going to get worse. Um, underreported story, Matt. I don't know if you picked it up. Some national Democratic donors are waiting on the sidelines about putting money into Florida. Are you aware of that? No, because of Val Demings or what? Not because of they just think that Florida is a waste of time. Uh, yeah. and that, uh, DeSantis well, is, and, and, and remember what I said to you a couple of, I, I've been saying this for a long time, but I remember saying it a couple of months ago that I thought it was a problem that there is no, there, you know, when I, I did it through the election, there is no money the Democrats spend in Florida, which is just like a, a Mickey Mouse club. Uh, every time you go into, you know, one of the local, uh, Democratic committees, you know, thing. This is a problem. This is a problem. Um, you you you, want, you got to get one of you guys over the Washingtonian to 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 delve into this and see about this. Florida is very doable, Matt. Look, uh, you and I have been agreeing on this. Yeah. I mean, Bill Nelson almost held that seat. Uh, you know, he had huge uh, uh, support for um, letting felons vote in a referendum. Of course, the Republicans snatched a lot of that back through the legislature. But this is a this is a winnable state, and it's tough. It's tough, but you know, Val Demings could win this. I and, definitely agree. Um, I definitely agree. And Santis could be beat, but you know, they they got to be all in to make that happen. Right. So it's very just it's, it's very uncomfortable to me why this continues to happen with the state and why they treat it like this. So something scares them here. I, I I'm just not sure what it is. Um, I want to move to Biden removed political hacks from military boards, and one of those was Kellyanne Conway, and another one was Sean Sp- Spicer. Spicy, who both have gone nuclear, saying we're going to take him to court for taking us off these appointed committees. 
<laughs> yeah, why can't we be on the committee? I mean, you know, we've done everything in our power to, to destroy America, but let's be honest. Yeah, we've blown up every norm. <laughs> no, we're not going to release prisoners' yeah. tax return or medical records. We're just going to do it our way. And now you dare take me off the uh, <laughs> the Annapolis Review Board with it's just bizarre stuff. I mean, it just really, really is. I mean, there's some full shit. Yeah, and the thing I, about I, it is that Kellyanne Conway <laughs> is as much a nut today as she's ever been. Maybe worse. Who knows what she's doing behind the scenes for Trump? I don't think she's a nut. But I, oh, I do. I, I think oh, I think she's a nut. I I thought she was a nut back in the day of Monica. Well, in Speaking of Monica, you. did you happen to see any of the FX? <laughs> No, my blood pressure is high enough. Uh, <laughs> well, I watched it for a whopping five minutes because it was so bad that it was unbelievable. This guy had won Emmy Awards for his other American crime scenes. This was beyond. But yeah, I like, I like the OJ one. That's not that. Yeah, the, um, the, believe me, this didn't even come close. But let me tell you something that was very weird in it. Monica was a producer on this, and she had rights of refusal on all of it. Right, right. The actress, I don't know who she is, who they, who she had portray her. Oh, my God, Matt, you need to watch it just for that because it was a picture of how Monica is now trying to portray herself. The girl was ugly, hugely overweight, which Monica was always a hefty girl, but she wasn't hugely overweight, and she was gorgeous. No, no. And she was gorgeous, and she was sexy, and she knew how to throw that hair, that black hair around and carry on like she did. I mean, she was hardly, you know... A victim in every sense, and this this portrayal was pathetic, pathetic. Yeah, yeah. Just I saying. don't know why. Well, I don't know. You know, Monica's Monica did a lot for many years. Her position was, I, I'm not a victim. You know, I, I was an adult. Because now the and new meme became, is to be the victim. Yeah, but but now you you want to be a victim so now she's a victim it's ridiculous it's absolutely ridiculous what an idiot she is i mean really you know but hey you know you do what you need to do that you well know. i mean this became her life and that's it's, it's sad you know she didn't marry she didn't, she didn't, didn't marry she didn't uh you know she didn't sort of i don't know what she did in terms of career except for kind of this and uh it's it, it's too bad i'm just it is, but you have to just just watch the first five minutes of it because it, it, it's it's scary you know, in that they're going to so take agitated. it. It was so agitating at the time. Yeah, uh, right. I was I with you on that. Know. Yeah, no, I agree. I don't know if I can do it again. It just I'm, because it, I may steal myself. Well, the only reason I'm saying, I, like I said, I couldn't get per, first the past the first five minutes because it was so stupid. It was ridiculous, it's stupid, but it was so wrong too. But hey, you know. Yeah, fucking Ken Starr was having an affair now, we find out. They all were. Hyde, Henry Hyde, the, every single one. Oh, uh, right. uh, 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 Ginrich, they all were. That's what's so funny yeah, about no, it. And that's what. never the story that's told. No, of course. Yeah, right. Coach anyway. Haster. Oh, my God. Coach I'm Haster gonna throw around up. writing checks. Can I, do, do you have any water you can send down this way so I can take a bath and clean, cleanse myself? Every time I have a discussion of that, that's how I feel. Ethel Kennedy opened up this morning. Her very liberal two grandchildren have wanted Sirhan Sirhan, who killed her husband, to be released from prison. She said no. Thank you, Ethel. One sane Kennedy left. Yeah, well, Rory said keep him in jail. Yeah, right? there were like yeah. two or, or whatever. But yeah. are you kidding me? This guy killed? Ugh, it's just amazing to me what this world has come to. Uh, Robert E. Lee, last statue taken down in Virginia, and Trump responded, Oh, my God, Matt. Oh, my God. Well, <laughs> well you know, I'm sorry. He must be very upset his garden of uh, heroes is not going to go. Remember, he wanted to make a big <laughs> statue theme park <laughs> with uh, statues of Scalia and Louis Armstrong. And, oh, my God. I mean, oh, my God. He, I'm, oh, my God. Please, somebody arrest Trump. Please, if you can get Andrew Cuomo, you can please get Trump. Um, he's also selling his D.C. hotel. I guess uh, business isn't what it used to be. He can't steal money anymore, so he's selling it. Yeah, he's got to get his name off these properties. I mean, it's just not its not where anyone wants to take a big function. Uh, on that note. I mean, outside of her. Yeah, on that note, how oh, in, in, is Washington a functioning city right now with COVID? <laughs> 
I mean, are people out and about like they are? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think we have very high mask compliance, and um, the rate's pretty low of hospitalizations. I, I think it's all kind of... So you're not living gone. under the stress level that we Floridians are living under? Well, only only if people yelling at you for not having a mask on. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I went to the library the other day, and um, I was in one of the separate glassed-in study rooms they have. It's very nice. Yeah, public we have them here and there. But my... You know, my mask was down. I was behind glass, you know. And the library starts, the librarian starts rapping on the glass. Get your mask on. Really? Said, okay. I get it. I get it on. Later, I had to the little study area and go out of the main area, and my mask had drooped a bit under my nose. Well, this time, I thought she was ready to, like, put the cuffs on me. No you know, kidding. Start shouting, sir, sir, your <laughs> mask. And by the way, I'm, like, 25 feet from anyone. I'm not, like, sitting, you know. Sit next to grandma. <laughs> and, uh, so this is kind of a very massive dorm place. It's the out of Florida. And, um, yeah, it's kind of basically functioning. Hi, can I come visit? Because I could use like about a week of not having to worry about all this. But I'm going to tell you what, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, you don't have to breathe yeah. your own air. But, you know. <laughs> it's just, it's just, you know, the stress is, 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 uh, definitely whatever. Uh, uh jobless claims were down. So people who are working are continuing to work, but they're still not able to fill things. Um, and, and and so I got a couple of more things. One is Chris Christie's looking like he's going to step out of Trump's shadow and maybe go for a run. Who cares? He's, right. Does anybody care? Does, is he uh, relevant on any level? Well, you know, he had a fairly compelling story going into uh, 2020, but I mean 2016, but it <coughs> I think that's gone now, and uh, no, I don't think he has any, any juice. Um, uh, what's the other thing? Um, men are not getting educated, college educations. I think that's interesting. Yeah, well, I think this idea that, you know, that uh, women are victims on all these campuses, I mean, look, and sexual assault is a real problem, I'm, I'm yeah, not to mention China. that, but this idea that, like, kind of, you know, we need endless support for for women and girls on these campuses. The fact is, it's a, it's a crisis of men in education now, and the, the women are doing a lot better. And um, you know, I think I think that is sim- symbolic of everything that's behind even the abortion laws. And every, men really are feeling emasculated, like they don't have a chance. It's sad. It's sad. yeah. I mean, it's it's true though. I mean, it, well, yeah. I mean, a lot of it's self pitying, but I, I agree. It's having a, it's having an effect, I and mean, it's not a good one. No, but no. Which leaves us with two <laughs> things to discuss. There is a new book coming out that nobody knew about by Stephanie Grisham, who happened to have been Trump's press secretary, who never gave a press conference, by the way. Right. Yes. Quite, and quite one time a, first nice lady. Work if you can yeah, get it. and one time first lady, uh, chief of staff. And apparently, well, let's see what she's got. She, uh, they say she's got a lot. She kept. Notes. I be. I can't. I think it comes out next month. It's one that I'm going to look at. That's for sure. I didn't get a title on it, but it'll be interesting. Um, which leaves us here. We are 20 year anniversary of 9 11. Yeah. So Matt, I, I don't see this as a something to commemorate. <laughs> I I I I don't see. I, you know, listen. It was horrible. People lost their lives. You know, we've had a whole lot of other crap happen in this country. People lose their lives in World <laughs> War II. Stop in America. I did a lot of shows and spoke to a lot of survivors. Uh, you guys can go in our archives and find them because they were, you know, got nominated for one of the shows. But I am not doing this anymore. How do you feel about it? Well, I, I think it has had two. Uh, an outsized role in American life. Obviously, it's one of the you know most important days in kind of American history in terms of changing so many things. But you know, I I, I think back to uh, my the way World War One uh, with the way Pearl Harbor was commemorated. You know, I mean, my parents were born in the 1920s and were young when that happened, but they always you know December 7th came around. Everyone we always knew about it. Uh, we talked about it. Um, there was kind of you know, the, the, the sneak attack was met with, you know, righteous anger and national unity. Um, you know, I wish 9-11, you know, but it didn't become a fabric of our lives right. year after year, either, the way 9-11 has. And, uh, 
you know, and I understand the difference. Uh, those were military deaths, mostly. These were civilians, etc. Uh, but um, I hope it has a, a lesser role in American life. And, and the problem is, I think we've just, you know, we just fucked up our response to this whole thing. You know, we had these wars that we didn't need. Uh, we, we, told we overreacted. People, we, we overreacted. We created this crazy Department right. of Homeland Security. I mean, yeah, I guess the CIA talks to the FBI now, so that's something. <laughs> it just, it just. But in general, yeah, it, <laughs> it, 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 it really, I think, unveiled a weak spot in the American character that needs yeah. to be fixed and healed. And move yeah. forward. And of course, it. now, Jesus, if something like that happened now, half the people wouldn't believe it happened. Right. They would say it was. They'd say, oh, lot. it was like the moon landing. Yeah. It was fake. Yeah. Don't even believe it happened. Exactly. But I, I, I do think that there needs to be some um, serious look at how we uh, address this in the future. And, and I'm just not going to give it um, the thing, you know, say a prayer. My heart goes out to those who lost. I have a friend who lost her son in it. I just say, you know, but stop it. Um, but I don't want to leave on that note, so we're going to leave on a high note. Uh, if you're into boxing, you're going to get a color performance by Mr. Pre- former President, the former guy, and his junior. Uh, what the fuck is that? That's all he's got to do, Matt. Oh, my God. Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, I can't. I can't bear it. I can't bear it. Uh, and on that, and on and, that, and they're no. worshiping on him on that note. You know, give me a break. Just give me a break. That's all I got to I'm say. I'm glad you're back. Break. I'm glad to be back. I'm it's glad so you're to, back. It's so good to talk to you. You're so glad smart. You're back. All right, we'll, we'll talk to you soon. Stay healthy. Goodbye, darling. Bye. Thank you for tuning in to the Helicaster Jane Show, a production of Resec LLC. The Helicaster Jane Show posts new podcasts Wednesdays, 3 p.m. Eastern, and is available at HowleyCasterJane.com and on all your favorite apps. Be sure to visit us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and follow me on Twitter at The Halle CJ Show. Until next time, this is Helicaster Jane.